thank you. Uh, May, are you from uh, Toledo, Ohio? Toledo, Ohio. And, okay. and I chair uh, the U.S. Conference of Mayors uh, Standing Committee on Housing and Community Development, which, uh, which just finished meeting. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that you talk about, as we all know, uh, in the nation, experiencing housing crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an issue especially that affects uh, minority community, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, women and children especially. Mm -hmm. uh, from what you are hearing among your uh, colleagues around the nation, mm -hmm. talk to me about how that conversation is going. Well, it, 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 it really is interesting because even though the causes, perhaps, of some of the housing issues vary from community to community, every community in this country, as far as I can tell, um, is struggling uh, with housing-related issues, most glaringly by the communities that uh, are seeing homelessness and, and encampments. Uh, in their communities. The mayor of Los Angeles, Karen Bass, has uh, created a task force to uh, uh, to fight that issue. Yeah, she spoke yesterday. She did, yeah. that's right. And, um, um, but also, even even not as extreme as homelessness, there's, there um, are issues around affordable housing and other various programs. As a conference, we believe there needs to be more affordable housing in this country. And a certain percent, there's a percentage of individuals who wouldn't necessarily be homeless if housing was more affordable. Um, that's certainly the case on the coasts where the cost of living is so much higher. Interestingly though, in my part of the country, uh, we have challenges of homelessness as well, but it's not because our housing stock is too expensive. Actually, we're very affordable, and that's the case not just in Toledo, but across the sort of industrial belt of America. No, our problems are a lack of economic opportunity and, and um, attainment. So it is interesting how the causes may be different depending on what part of the country, you're in, but universally across the board, housing is an issue that is challenging mayors. And so committee meetings like the one we just had are helpful uh, to not only share ideas with colleagues around the country, uh, to try to talk about best practices, but also to hear from the federal officials, the HUD officials um, who make these decisions, frankly, who distribute dollars, uh, and to have access to Marsha Fudge, the secretary of HUD, or today, uh, Adrian Todman, the deputy secretary, sort of the COO of HUD, to have uh, face time with these leaders uh, is invaluable in terms of uh, getting the resources and the know-how into our communities to help address uh, a very pressing problem. You mentioned getting the resources to the community. Uh, one aspect of this is they said you can, you know, working in someone else's shoes, mm -hmm. you understand what is actually yes. going on. Yep, that's right. And oftentimes people in leadership have not experienced what some of these people are yeah. going through. So how are you engaging uh, the community that you are trying to address this issue to make sure they are receiving the resources, yeah. that the resources that you're providing is the right resources that they actually Yeah, I, I think the, the mayors who get it right, the, the ones who do a good job, are ones who engage all aspects of their community well. You're right, there, is, there are folks who fundamentally can't understand this problem because they haven't lived it. Um, but I think most of the folks in that room, uh, whether that was part of their personal journey or not, the reason they're in their position, the reason they're on this committee is because they do care about these issues. And a successful city that addresses this problem well has built the relationships with, in my town, it's called the Homelessness Board, or the social service agencies. You know, the, the elephant in the room that maybe uh, hasn't been discussed during this conversation, but it needs to be is mental health. Um, not all, but many uh, individuals who are struggling with homelessness, to take one example, are struggling with mental health. So robust relationships with social service agencies and, and, and mental health services is important. I don't believe anyone would have been in that meeting if they don't, um, if they aren't sincerely attempting to, as one would say, live in someone else's shoes and, and empathize and uh, you know try to 
try to find solutions. That that fundamentally, that's what the U.S. Conference of Mayors is all about. Okay. Uh, the I guess I we sort of wrap this up. What lessons have you learned? And as um, one question that was um, brought up is what you know this issue, as we said, is a hot topic. Uh, and what keeps you awake at night, and what gives you hope? Well, that we might the, we might turn it, things. No, about. no. What I, I mean, I think what we learned and what we know is that there is an affordable housing crisis in America. There's not enough affordable housing. One of the challenges is, though, is maybe it's a communications challenge, is that I think, I don't know that every American truly understands what affordable housing is. Um, I think they confuse it with Section 8 housing, public housing, low-income housing. That affordable housing is something different. Affordable housing is housing for us. It's not housing for them. And too much of this country right now is divided into an us versus them narrative. Um, affordable housing is fundamentally for us. Um, it, it, if you find yourself spending more than 30% of your income on housing, then you are um, housing insecure. And that's, the, that, that's the technical phrase. And it means that you need affordable housing. Now, technically, a millionaire could be um, housing insecure if too much of his uh, salary, his or her salary was spent on housing. We know that's not the case, and it's typically folks who are struggling economically. Um, but um, there, there's a need for more affordable housing, and there's a need to educate citizens about what affordable housing is and isn't, because part of what we heard today is that there's, you know, there are sometimes, um, you know, there's a nimbyism a uh, not-in-my-backyardism that enters into these discussions. That should not be the case with affordable housing because the folks that benefit from it in Toledo, across every spectrum of gender, race, income, uh, mirror pretty closely the average Toledo. And if, I think if people understood that more, they'd be, um, you know, we'd have a healthier conversation around affordable housing. And what, what, what gives you hope? gives me hope is that there's so much attention uh, dedicated to this right now that there is a focus. It's not as though that this is a problem and no one knows it's a problem and no one knows how to solve it. No, the fact that time and resources are being devoted at these levels to this conversation does give me hope. The election is coming up. Uh, yeah. The election is coming up in November and you are one of the key states. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we were. Um, yeah, no, Ohio, um, Ohio is in a part of the country that is uh, typically important to electing a president. Um, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, they, they, they are part of uh, the country, the, the part of the country where yeah. elections are typically decided. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of issues that are important to the voters this year and important to the candidates. But I think affordable housing, homelessness, those sorts of issues are rising uh, as, as, as something that could make the difference this November. Okay, thank you so much for okay. talking with us. Thank, thank you. you.